All right, so I am going to go ahead and kind of get started with everything. Um, if you are listening in or catching the replay, I'm so, super excited to bring you uh, the uh, Foster My Stories season 13, episode 51, which is the May highlights for the podcast. Um, today I'm doing a audio live uh, due to timing and projects. Usually I uh, pre-record, but uh, no worries. So I just wanted to get on and kind of highlight for you, the listeners, um, basically what's been happening with the podcast since uh, May of this year. As some of you may know, um, the podcast kind of took a, a minor break. Um, so basically from um, May until the early part of August. And so I'm here to kind of share with you what those highlights are and where the podcast is going, what the podcast is, cast is doing. Super excited about that. So hello, Gracefully Chosen community, and welcome to the uh, Foster My Stories podcast, which is an achievement-focused podcast for the foster care, adoption, orphan, and underserved communities. I'm your host, Shalina Michelle Tate. And on today's cast episode, I would like to basically recap some highlights from May through the early part of August uh, concerning the podcast. Um, the podcast, as I mentioned earlier, was away for a few months just to kind of gear up for season 13, which we are in now. So I just wanted to kind of go over what the podcast has been doing. And once again, today is a uh, audio live session for the podcast. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section and I will get to them as time permits. And so just to continue the conversation in today's cast episode, <laughs> super excited. Um, so May, May uh, was, we took a break from the podcast, right? So May is highlighted as the month of National Foster Care Awareness Month. And as many of you already know or may be learning, I grew up in the Richland County foster care system, which is located in Columbia, South Carolina. And I'm honored to continue strides in sharing achievement-focused storylines relative to this community. So this will be my, really my second year or yeah, I'm going to a second year celebrating, um, being able to acknowledge and celebrate Foster Care Awareness Month in some kind of way. And the way I was able to do that is to, for another year, hold like uh, weekly questions, significant questions during the each week of May. And I was able to kind of test the knowledge of the Foster My Stories podcast listeners. And from that, I was able to award gift cards to a couple people who I want to kind of highlight and recognize here right now. Um, so uh, I had submissions from Caprice Taylor, Jessica Lynn, and Jabari Phillips, who all won a variety of gift cards while Miriam Jones won access to Dave Armstrong's mentorship program. Dave Armstrong's, as you know, he's a phenomenal leader. I did a, um, he was one of my first interviews for the new year, coming into the new year for the podcast. And he has a phenomenal mentorship program where he kind of counsels youth and families right where they are. And as far as progressing in life and just, um, daily goals and just, you know, meeting expectations day by day, bit by bit. So I'm super excited about that. And I look forward to what the future opportunities for the celebration of Foster My Stories podcast with the month of May for National Foster Care Awareness Month may be able to do. So there you have it for right now. That is the May, uh, really the May highlight for what the podcast has been up to. Super excited. So next up um, for the month of June, the, the podcast has kind of been off for a few months, no worries, but I'm just kind of highlighting for you now. <laughs> for the month of June, uh, the Foster My Stories podcast uh, took the month of June to prepare for another year participating with the Advanced 
foster care topics virtual retreat that was hosted by Dr. John DeGarmo, who is the founder of the Foster Care Institute. Super excited to have been able to return and also, aside from being a presenter, uh, being able to assist as an organizer for the virtual retreat. And so, uh, yeah, I really appreciate Dr. Garmo and um, just really his message and um, just progressing the message of helping foster care youth and families progress um, despite their situations. And so super excited to have been a part of that. Myself and Danny Van, who is another a community leader, um, got to be the organizers for that uh, virtual retreat. And as presenters as well, we got to meet another group of dynamic leaders who basically uh, had phenomenal presentations to present for the conference. And um, feel free as well if you want to listen and or watch the, my presentation on the five critical settings to attribute to positive memories for our foster care youth, uh, feel free to reach out to me um, via Facebook and I can see that presentation. Or if you want to connect with any of the other guests who presented for the conference, and you may be asking, well, who are these other guests? Well, the events foster care topics virtual retreat, uh, we got to present during the week of June 12th. June 12th was National uh, Children's Day, which was very exciting to be able to be a part of and to actually present the start of a conference for. And so June 12th kicked off that week. And during the whole week, we got to listen to phenomenal presentations from a group of uh, leaders and individuals wanting to make positive positive strides for the uh, foster adoption orphan and underserved communities. And so just to kind of recap what the topics were and who the people were, uh, starting off on the 12th, we had uh, Elena Hall, who basically is a leader in her area. She is the author of, um, a, well, her presentation, let's start there, was Adoptee identity in words. Her presentation was adopt the identity in words. And she kind of went into the fact that, which we all know, labels can kind of like make you feel kind of isolated and really unwanted. A lot of times when someone hears somebody has been adopted or was in foster care or orphan, they kind of get treated differently or funny. And, and her whole highlight was just to kind of still treat people like people no matter if they were adopted, orphaned, underserved, or fostered. So yeah, I really appreciate her her message. You're going to hear background noise because I am doing a live audio, um, but I appreciate your time today. Once again, this is the Foster My Story season 13, episode 51, uh, audio live of the episode um, May Plus highlights. So, so super excited to bring that to you here uh, as an audio for you to kind of like go back and listen. But yeah, so Elena Hall, I appreciate her for uh, really mentioning um, the necessity to still treat people like people and that their labels shouldn't treat them or make them feel any different. And that was her whole message. Elena, she is the author of um, Through Adopted Hearts, Through Adopted Eyes, and the newest edition is Adoption is Both. Once again, her books, through Adopted Hearts, Through Adopted Eyes, and the newest one is Adoption is Both, and of course, it is a triple, it's like a three-part, so um, I implore you to reach out to Elena Hall, she is on Facebook at E-L-E-N-A-H-A-L-L, -L, um, or at through Adopted Eyes. You can find her page there at Through Adopted Eyes and you can connect with her there to network really about her books and her journey. And she's also currently a phenomenal a social worker in her area where she's helping her community and use the right where they are. So that was Elena Hall. She was the first presenter. Next up, we had Miss Cheryl Williams, who also presented on the 12th. Michelle Williams is uh, Miss Southwest 2022. I'm super excited. I just 
recently interviewed her for the podcast. Um, she has a phenomenal message that she is really campaigning, and that is ideas to reform the foster care system. She said so many dynamic gems in her presentation where she was just saying how um, a lot of times we can really reform the foster care by uh, changing things that tends to be the norm. In other words, a lot of times uh, when people hear foster care system, is they feel like there's no hope. And sometimes, unfortunately, some of those changes need to be made internally and on upper levels. And that was the point she was making that being able to kind of come together as leaders and as um, really just coming together to make changes can do all the the good or better the situation. An example she gave was to uh, kind of remove the abuser from the home instead of removing the child. And I think that's a phenomenal really example that she presented because a lot of kids get removed and they go into oppression and depression. And um, she was making really the note to just kind of Let's see, can we come together as leaders, brainstorm different ways to do um, reform instead of what we felt always works. So once again, Cheryl Wilms, Miss 2022 Southwest, was the next speaker for the month of June 12th. Super excited to really kind of cover what she's up to and what she's doing. She's doing some phenomenal things. If you want to also uh, further connect with Cheryl, her book, Turning Trauma into Troubleshooting, can be found at www.fundfc.org. So once again, Cheryl Wims, she has this book called Turning Trauma in, excuse me, Turning Trauma into Troubleshooting, which you can find at uh, www.fund, that's F-U-N-D, Frank Charlie.org. Um, so reach out to her there to kind of see what kind of projects she's working on. You can also reach her, reach her here at um, her Facebook page. Uh, it may be Cheryl Wims or Cheryl Elizabeth Wims. Um, but yeah, reach out to her. Um, possibly do that fun FC page. All right. And so next up during the um, events, foster care topics, virtual retreat for the month of June. Uh, next up we had I want to make sure I go in the right order. <laughs> There's a lot of phenomenal uh, presenters. So uh, definitely we had. OK. Yeah, I'm just kind of going through a list right now. So I appreciate your patience. All right. No worries. No worries. So Mandy, Mandy uh, Lemon, phenomenal um, leader. Uh, Mandy Lemon, she basically presented on PTSD, turning your mess into a message. That was her presentation for the virtual conference. And her, basically her testimony is just kind of like how she's dealt with PTSD and how she, uh, as a, a foster parent, has dealt with uh, youth that deals with that and trauma. And really that's her whole message now. Mandy is an Emmy Award winning um, um TV producer. She uh, is a finance expert. She is a mentor, a business coach, and phenomenal all around. She uh, wants to, and her whole message is turning your mess into a message. So uh, Mandy will be coming up uh, on the podcast as time permits on a live. I'm super excited for you to be able to hear her tips um, as far as how to overcome situations dealing with trauma and PTSD and just um, what many of us may go through despite our situations. Once again, foster adoption, orphan underserved communities tend to have high um, levels of it unknown to many. Um, it's not just, you know, we hear military all the time, but it's not just military. A lot of times being removed from a home can, can leave an, a traumatic um, really uh, expression on a youth. So Mandy Lemon, I'm super excited to have her. But once again, she was one of the speakers. And once again, this is the season 13 uh, episode, um, episode 50 of um, 51 of the podcast, just basically highlighting May plus highlights of what's been going on with the podcast since we were on break from May through the beginning of August. And I just wanted to highlight. And once again, um, 
the presenters for the virtual conference we had back in June. All right. So Mandy Lemon can be reached at Amanda Lemon, that's A-M-A-N-D-A-L-E-M-O-N-D.com. You can reach her to network with her to really kind of like see what she's up to and to just uh, really celebrate her. Um, let me see. Can I go to that page? Once again, this is an audio live, right? So, <laughs> um, but she is going to be participating in an upcoming um, um, pro program or event. Um, well, I can't get to it right now. No worries. But she's doing a lot of phenomenal things. She just got signed to a publisher. She's going to be participating in an um, event where it's like it's awareness and you have to wear your pajamas, but it's for a cause. And so uh, she's doing a lot of phenomenal things. Um, once again, her name is Mandy Lemon. She was one of the speakers for the events foster care virtual topics retreat that we had back in June on starting the week of June 12th, which was uh, National Children's Day. Very cool. Next up, uh, another presenter that presented do, during um, on the 13th with Mandy um, was Miss Alicia Nutson Jackson, or Jackson Nutson, excuse me, Alicia Jackson Nutson. Um, a lot of times we call her Miss Alicia Nutson. Uh, she had the message of how to listen so your teenager will talk. Her message was how to listen. So your teenager will talk. Um, Alicia, she is an expert coach, mentor in dealing with families and teens. Um, that uh, she, this is what she does on a, a daily basis. She has a book called Life in the Foster Lane. Once again, that's Life in the Foster Lane. That's um, you can find that on her website. She does a lot of counseling, especially with families and youth. Um, at her website. LiciaNutson.com. That's L E S I A K N U D S E N.com. There you can find more about um, her services and her mentorship and really her testimony of what she's been through, uh, whether as um, dealing with fostering, adoption, and really just um, mentorship as far as those situations. Alicia, uh, once again, she spoke about how to listen. So your teenager would talk. And a lot of times that's vital, especially for youth going through the foster adoption orphan or underserved situation. Um, they can go through traumatic experiences and a lot of times they shut down and they don't really want to talk. You know, sometimes they need somebody to kind of listen to them or, you know, just kind of not make them feel like it's their fault. And then they'll open up and probably be more receptive to sharing and um being involved in conversation, but yeah. So Alicia Jackson Nutson was the second speaker to speak for the, the 13th of June for the events foster care topics, excuse me. Appreciate your patience doing a, a audio live. <laughs> Next up, uh, just recapping for the month of June national uh, Children's Day speakers for the events foster care topics. Um, on the 15th, we had um, Ms. Kat Son. She could not be in attendance for the question, the Q&A session, but she did a presentation called Strengthening Trauma Informed Care Through Vow Awareness. It's a long title, but basically it's like is basically like a therapeutic service that she provides. It's called Strengthening Trauma Informed Care Through Vow Awareness. And uh, Kat Son is a professional. Um, she's basically is a retired from a 36 federal career in, in 2020 and now continues her late husband's healing work, which is at the bodymemoryprocess.com website it's called bodymemoryprocess.com there you could go to the site kind of you know look around and see the books and services that the website provides and what really body memory process is about and um how to further connect with cat miss cat if you're wanting to inquire more about her services or um really understand what the body memory process is about or engage in her books and lessons. 
uh, once again, Kat San was one of the presenters for the, the Advanced Foster Care Topics Virtual Retreat. And um, she presented, uh, her presentation was, was featured the same day as Mr. Danny Van, who also presented um, on the 14th as well, along with Ms. Ms. Kat San. His uh, presentation was the five keys to connecting to community. It's five keys to connecting to community. And myself, along with Danny, were the organizers for the event. Super excited. That was a phenomenal time. Um, uh, Danny, Mr. Danny Van, he's on Facebook right now as Danny Van, former foster trauma survivor. He has an Aging Out Academy He's um, that he's the founder of. He's the author of 99 Days of 100% Encouragement, which I really would like for you to kind of go look into. Phenomenal book um, for lessons and tips. 100 Days of Encouragement at DannyVan.com. Van with two N's. That's D-A-N-N-Y dot sorry, D-A-N-N-Y-V-A-N-N.com. And um, there he has a lot of really motivational and um, progressive um, just quotes and books and just things to kind of meet you and they use right where you are. Uh, yeah, so Danny Van, pretty cool guy. Um, he presented um, also on the 14th with Miss Cat, and also with myself was an organizer for the event. And that was on the 14th. Uh, June and once again, excuse me. Once again, I am recapping really what's been going on with the podcast since it's been kind of like MIA <laughs> from May. I was MIA from May through um, going to the beginning of August, but no worries, a lot of great things was happening in the background. So just catching you up as the listener viewer. All right. So next up for the um, events foster care topics was none other than the host, Mr. Do Dr. John DeGarmo, who is the founder of the Foster Care Institute. Um, Mr. DeGarmo is um, a motivational speaker. He's a mentor, um, just dynamic uh, leader all around. He basically presented on parenting troubled teens. That was his, uh, really his presentation. And of course, he knows he has a background dealing with um, as an adoptive parent. He has children right now that he that he is a phenomenal father to. He mentors people all across the country. Um, really, and he has numerous books and trainings to really help um, aspiring foster parents and mentors right where they are to kind of like be the best they can for these youth that's needing um really care whether you're a foster parent adoption parent whether you're thinking about going into it and um he's a phenomenal person to connect with he will be able to kind of like mentor and guide you to where you need to be once again dr john degarmo is the host was the host and he presented on parenting troubled teens his book uh that came out around that time is the foster care survival guide uh another extraordinary book that he has um, from his website. Uh, it's called The Foster Care Survival Guide, The Essential Guide for Today's Foster Parents. Great book uh, to check into. Um, you could visit it on his um, website, uh, which once again, he's the founder of the Foster Care Institute. You might have to look him up as the Foster Care Institute, Dr. John DeGarmo, kind of a long title, and it, it'll it should lead you right there to the website for you to be able to um, kind of check out everything he's he's been doing. He's been on TED Talk. Uh, he's been featured on a number of stations, interviewed, and really because his services really meets the parent and the youth right where they are. And so that's why he um, he's very down to earth. You, you would think because he's you know got all these things going on and super busy that he's very very approachable. So just wanted to put that out there. All right. So next up, and once again, that was Dr. John DeGarmo. He is the founder of the Foster Care Institute, and he was the host of the events foster care uh, virtual retreat that we just did back in June. All right. And then next up, it was me. I was one of the presenters for um, that presented during the week of the 12th. Um, my topic was the five critical settings to contribute positive memories for foster care youth. Now, attributing positive memories may not always be an easy thing, but it could be critical if you're paying attention 
as an aspiring foster parent or, or as a new foster parent or a current foster parent, um, when you get a new placement, a lot of times foster youth are called placements, um, they're coming with a lot of baggage and trauma and just different things they've been through. And your placement, along with, I, I touched on a few things, school setting, environment, so that could be the school, your, your home, inside, outside of the home, when dealing with uh, bio parents, um, basically when going on family trips and outings, it's kind of like finding ways to include the foster youth and also making them um, feel like the, a positive atmosphere, uh, a positive memory. And uh, that may be as little as, you know, I know it's, uh, a lot of times when foster parents go on vacation, uh, many of them will put their children, their foster children in something called respite care, which is not a bad thing. Sometimes foster parents need a break, I understand. But if you are a parent, foster parent or, or whatnot that goes on a lot of vacations throughout the year and your foster child is of age where they you know they, they can can travel um kind of like sticking them in another placement even if it is temporarily kind of makes them feel kind of shut down right so it's just a matter of still including them still including them um in the process and making them feel like they're not an outsider they already kind of feel that way um but just trying to find ways whether that's you know uh, giving them the freedom to decorate their room um, in an appropriate way, of course. Uh, whether that's allowing them to, if they're of age, they might want to help, you know, help cook in the kitchen or learn something. In other words, take those moments to kind of meet them right where they are and make them feel welcome. And that was my topic. It was called Five Critical Settings to Contribute Positive Memories for a Foster Care Youth. I mentioned bio parents because some um, foster parents have a tendency to talk about the bio parents in front of the youth. And if the youth is of age to understand what's being said, sometimes they may be in the process of being reunified and they don't really need to hear the foster parent kind of bashing their parent, if that makes sense. You want to kind of keep the environment as harmonious as possible, unless, you know, I mean, and there's cases where they may never be reunified. But whatever the case is, it's a matter of just kind of trying to be the best um environment for them and the conversation kind of extended as well to like mentors um, um guardians at light and social workers and especially teachers um in school settings if you know you have foster children that come and they're in your school um not making them feel isolated or not i guess you know spreading their business <laughs> um okay i'll go into another another segment on that one but to continue <laughs> to continue the segment. So that was my presentation, um, just kind of like dealing with um, just trying to find or tribute five critical settings to attribute positive memories for foster care youth. And um, my book, Fostered, can be found on Amazon.com. It's, it's Fostered by Shalina Michelle Tate. You may have to put the whole title in for it to pop up. And there's also an ebook as well. I'm working on other projects as well. So it's not the only book. Some other stuff is on the in development. Um, so super excited to unveil that as time progresses. All right. And moving right along. Um, then we had Miss Miss Barbara Davis and Wanda Jacobs, who was a duo presented Your Future Your Future is Bright. Your future is bright. And their message really was just meeting the youth right where they are, being an encouragement, and really kind of being the change in the environment for the youth that we all want to see, right? Don't want to, don't really want to, um, sorry, really don't want to just constantly remind the youth of, okay, you're in this situation, and you, you know this is your fault and you know I, you want to kind of like try to that goes back to what i was saying of trying to be a positive uh environment for the youth miss barbara um 
Davis does a phenomenal job of that. She owns a theatrical company that involves the youth and gets them involved and included in a lot of her skits and her programming. And it's very educational, almost like an ETV, but local to her area. And um, just kind of, you know, just meeting the youth right where they are. And then you have Wanda Jacobs, who basically, um, you know, was a social worker and just uh, very creative in meeting um, families and youth right where they are. Both both women are um, really dynamic mentors and leaders. And also, if you want to network with Barbara Davis and Wanda Jacobs, um, feel free to reach out to me and I kind of get you connected with them. Um, they're always looking to network for projects and just services or whatnot. And they're phenomenal mentors and leaders, you know, that's wanting to continue to help youth no matter where you live, right? Because um, youth needs help. The youth need help um, no matter what state and county and location you may be. All right. And so once again, that was Barbara Davis and Wanda Jacobs. They presented as a duo. Your future is bright um, on the uh, last day of the conference. And um, we held really nightly Q&A sessions. Um, and once again, Ms. Masson wasn't able to attend, but her really her uh, body memory process website um, really kind of spells out what kind of services she's able to present and kind of mentor families on as far as progression. Um, and that was just a recap of June as far as um, what happened with the podcast in June and really just highlighting the presenters for the advanced foster care topics virtual retreat that was hosted by Dr. John DeGarmo. Um, that was really excellent. And then of course, next up, then we went into the month of July. Um, <laughs> and these, this time went by so fast. I don't know what happened to the time, but this whole year is going by fast. If you ask me, it's already August, but anyway, <laughs> um, July. Um, so aside from seeing the pretty fireworks, um, Give me a moment. So you know what? <laughs> I pre uh, yeah, so I presented all of that and really is I, I need to say I need to correct that. Um, so basically we, pre we prepared in June for the conference in July. So it was July 12th. Um, but but the month just changed, not the content. <laughs> so I got my notes here. Um so basically, all the presenters I just presented, it was July 12th um, for the National Foster or National uh, Youth Day, which was the 12th. All right. No worries. And then um, July also brought us fireworks and delicious cookouts and food and, and whatnot. And um, that's if you visit family and friends. And I saw a lot of pretty fireworks. And of course, you already know me. I told people, be careful. Make sure the kid's not you know, getting hurt. So I don't know. <laughs> and then as July rolled up as after we so we planned in June for the conference, we presented the June. We presented the conference in July. And then now we're in August. August, the beginning of August was a break for us as well because that was back to school for many families and youth and excitement and tax-free weekend and all that good stuff. So uh, the podcast was not on the first week in August because of that, kind of give um, families time to kind of like, you know, be with their families, prepare their kids for school. I, I believe everybody should be in school by now, I think. <laughs> I hope so. I don't know. It's in different, different states and everywhere. So I don't know. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, that's why Foster My Stories was not on air beginning of August. But the second week of August, um, Foster My Stories returned with the kickoff of Cheryl Wilms, who I mentioned earlier from the lineup of the Advanced Foster Care Topics Virtual Retreat. She was my guest uh, that kicked off season 13, episode 49. And um, basically, I was telling you that her message to reform foster care. We, we continued that conversation. And basically, uh, Cheryl, she's phenomenal. Her whole message is just really just telling families and youth that they can do anything they set their mind to. She was kind of testifying about how, um, you know, she met a local um, beauty queen who inspired and encouraged her to like 
considered trying out for beauty pageants and she didn't think she was qualified because of speaking and didn't have the credentials or skills but she did it and now she's Miss Southwest 2022 and she is now on a platform to be able to travel around and share her message with reforming foster care which is a phenomenal message and really just kind of like uh just pairing and partnering with local communities and leaders to try to uh, make strides towards those efforts. So I kudos off to uh, Cheryl Williams. She's continuously making strides to do that in her area. So proud of her. Um, and I am so um, thankful that she's continuing to spread the message. Then Mr. Danny Van was on uh, the Facebook live, or should I say live streaming session of uh, the podcast on yesterday. Um, got to kind of like go and, you know, talk to him or interview him about trauma and he was able to share a wealth of resources that can help the family and in, in youth right where they are dannyvan.com that's d-a-n-n-y-v-a-n-n.com go there support him look at all the resources he has he has he has uh books he has most recent book is 99 days of 100 percent encouragement he has a wealth of knowledge about dealing with foster care trauma. He, that's his background. He kind of grew up in that. And then now he's a coach and mentor who meets the youth and the families right where they are. And he will be phenomenal, especially if you know of a male youth. You know, a lot of times there's not enough male mentors out here, especially in, on the topics of foster adoption, orphan and underserved. But Mr. Danny Van is. And I highly really highly advise you to reach out to him and just see what he's all about. And once again, his book, 99 Days of 100% Encouragement, which also was forwarded by Dr. John DeGarmo, is a phenomenal resource and tool that can meet you right where you are. Even if you inbox him, I'm pretty sure he can just give you like a list of encouragement or resources to direct you um, and your family in what you may be going through. So once again, Mr. Danny Van was on the podcast only yesterday. So grateful to have had him um, really just talk about trauma and how, you know, it carries from childhood. It goes into adulthood and trauma can happen in many different forms. Um, he gave the example of how he, for the longest and he didn't know why just loud sounds, popping sounds kind of just triggered him. And but how he had to then face that and grow out of that or be able to deal with it as it comes. So sometimes a youth may have gone through something traumatic and they kind of need someone to kind of help them right where they are, not judge them, not not down them, not label them or medicate them or isolate them, but to really meet them right where they are. And so, yes, I highly advise reaching out to Mr. Danny Van, that's D-A-N-N-Y-V-A-N-N.com and networking with him and then now we have today today <laughs> um it's gonna be uh basically an upload but i decided to do like an audio uh live to bring you episode uh the foster my story um season 13 episode 51 which is the may plus highlights and once again i was covering what was going on with the podcast since the month of may when we was mia and um, now we have reached this point. And so what's coming up for the podcast, you may ask? Well, going into the next few weeks, I'm super excited because the podcast is about to launch the official website, fostermystories.com. That's Frank Mary Story with an I, not a Y, dot com. Um, it's not ready yet. So if you go there, you may see some different pictures than what <laughs> those are like some test pictures. So you may not see any really real content there. <laughs> if you try to go there now, that's Frank Mary Story with an I, not a Y, dot com. Um, but when the site is ready, it's going to have everything listed from the podcast, the guests, the, the projects, what's coming up, and a place where you can connect and the addition that I'm super excited for is that Foster My Stories will also have a, um, a freelance section where you can visit and you can either network or, you know, do a proposal or um, really join in or partner in on products and services uh, from what will be listed. It will be five categories um, of services that will be freelanced uh, through Foster My Stories. So I'm super excited about that uh, to really help 
um, entrepreneurs, small business owners, or, or creatives um, that's needing help, um, whether it's with small business, social media, uh, creative stuff like telling their story through a memoir or, um, I don't know, a play or a short film or maybe a podcast. I don't know. <laughs> but it's really helping um, freelance services to help individuals right where they are. That's just a snippet. I'm super excited. So you will be the first to know when um, the podcast is, well, this is the podcast right now, right? When the full website is up and running and uh, for view and for interaction. I'm super excited about that. And uh, just to do a recap, this was season 13, episode 51 of the Foster My Stories podcast. Today I'm doing a basically impromptu um, um, audio live uh, streaming session uh, because of timing and projects I'm working on. And I was just highlighting uh, what's been going on with the podcast um, since May. So just to do a really quick recap, the month of May was National Foster Care Awareness Month. I was able to award um, some listeners who was able to answer some questions, some gift cards, and then one listener was able to take some classes, some mentorship classes with Mr. Dave Armstrong because they were submitted the correct answers to the, the weekly questions. Then the month of June was preparation for the Advanced Foster Care Topics Virtual Retreat with Dr. John DeGarmo, which was very exciting. Got to collaborate with a number of um, dynamic leaders in preparation for their presentations and just really ways we can progress the foster care adoption orphan underserved communities forward. And then we were able to then present those presentations and ideas on June 12th, the week of June 12th, which was uh, National Children's Day, which was very exciting really humbled to have been able to participate during that week. And now, um, and also the month of July brought fireworks and I'm hoping yummy food for some people, cookouts, and I hope you didn't get too full, but you know, usually that's the time for that, right? <laughs> and then uh, now we have going into the early part of August, it was back to school for a lot of youth uh, return to school. So tax-free weekend, back to school. I'm hearing the bus early in the morning for a lot of people. So good times, right? <laughs> and so the, and so now we bring to the, almost the end of this month. So far we've had uh, Cheryl Williams as the first kickoff guest for the month, um, who once again is Ms. Southwest 2022 and her book, Turning Your Trauma into Troubleshooting, which kind of helps people right where they are at www.fundfc.org. Um, and then I kind of um, highlighted how Mr. Danny Van was my uh, face, well, really my live stream guest uh, for the now the new um, streaming portion of Foster My Stories. You, you're still going to get content that's like, you know, uploaded, but the um, streaming will be included as well in, in the story. Um, progression of the story. All right. And so, um, and now we're here, we're here to this episode. And then coming up, we have like really the, um, the website, which is coming up, super excited about that and a number of projects that's being worked on right now. So to sum all of that goodness up, right? I, I said a lot. <laughs> uh, I appreciate you listening today. And if you're upbringing community service or job connects you to the foster adoption orphan or underserved community I would like to have you on the podcast whether you would like to do an interview in advance or if you want to do a live stream interview I would love to chat with you you can inbox me here on this page or at Shalina Michelle Tate Facebook page or LinkedIn at Shalina Tate MBA either platform is fine <laughs> and then make sure to uh, really tune in for updates about content posted on any of the platforms convenient for you. Those platforms are Red Circle, Spotify, Amazon's Audible and Music, Radio Public, Google Podcasts, and you can also go back and listen to um, Foster My Story podcast content via Facebook at the Foster My Stories Facebook page. And you know you're at your, the right page because it has a purple background. So yeah, feel free to go there. And I, it's kind of weird. You can't really see the episodes if you're on a, a laptop. I don't know why, but if you were on a phone, you'll get to see all the episodes like listed right there. I don't know. It just it just is. <laughs> and um, 
And so today, uh, just to recap, basically learned about the highlights. The whole highlights from May to um, the early part of August was just really a time to just uh, be able to work on other projects and really include Foster My Stories and some exciting um, events and just networking um, with other leaders, making continual strides to help the foster adoption orphan and underserved communities. And also, um, oh, this month also brought us to Relate to You segment, which was last week, which um, highlighted movies, uh, positive movies that you and your family can enjoy, the Lost Medallion um, movie, uh, The Legend of Billy Stone. And then there's this movie coming up called Life Mark. It's coming up September 9th in theaters. I'm super excited about that. That is directed by the Kendrick brothers, Alex Kendrick. And he also was the public figure of the month, him and his brothers, um, Alex, the Kendrick brothers alone. Um, yeah, they, they're going to be doing this movie called Life Mark. So I really highly advise you and your family to look out for that and hopefully see how you can engage. Um, and really it's, he, basically Alex Kendrick was the um, public figure um, because through the power of love and forgiveness and restoration, the lesson was that restoration can heal what always felt broken. And that's his message. The Kendrick brothers, that's what their message. When they do a lot of their movies and storylines, they also tend to include the foster adoption orphan underserved communities in their storytelling. So that's why Alex Kendrick was the public figure of the month. Um, and as always, remember that despite your situation and circumstance and what's going on now, um, being fostered, adopted, orphaned, or underserved just simply means I'm going to call you a new name and it's called Gracefully Chosen. And remember you're gracefully chosen despite your circumstance. Thanks so much for taking time out of your schedule. And if you enjoyed this content, please feel free to share this with someone you know. And once again, stay tuned for updates because I'm excited to roll out the launch of the Foster My Stories website, which is not quite ready yet, but it will be soon. And I will be super excited for you to engage in that. All right, well, feel free to leave me a comment, a message, or inbox me. You take care. Have a great day.